Yes, it's John G. Sutton. Tales from the Jails. Yeah, I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, Wormwood Scrubs. And that's something of the history of Wormwood Scrubs. It's still operational today. It has a an approximate capacity of 1,275 inmates today. It's a, it's a male prison, strictly male prison, uh, at uh, Hammersmith, in the, in the borough of Hammersmith, uh, which is near East Acton, yeah? And uh, the road it's on is called Duquesne Road. And Duquesne Road was named after Sir Edmund Duquesne, who was the architect responsible for building Wormwood Scrubs. It was initially started around about 1869, and uh, the first phase was completed in 1875. Now, the bricks for the prison were manufactured on site, and, and the builders for the prison, the architect was Edmund Duquesne, but the actual builders were, believe it or not, prisoners. They, they were out, they were doing the labouring, the lifting, the shifting and the bricklaying. And uh, it was completed in 1891. Uh, and it, to have the uh, A, B, C and D wings, yeah, with the 16 foot wall. At the front of the prison, you see the towers, the two towers. They depict uh, Elizabeth Fry and John Howard, uh, who were prison reformers. Because believe it or not, prisons were even worse before they built Wormwood Scrubs. <clears throat> Some of the notable inmates in the Scrubs have been uh, John Stonehouse, who was a former cabinet minister who set up his own bank. Uh, pretended, faked his death in Miami, Florida, USA, left his clothes on a beach and pretended that it, it faked it, that he'd been washed out to sea or something. When he hadn't been washed out to sea at all, he'd escaped to Australia because he robbed his own bank, you see. Emptied all, all the money from his bank, set up a bank, emptied it, stole all the money and went to live in Australia. And he was discovered in Australia absolutely by chance because they were looking at the time for the missing Lord Lucan who was wanted for the murder of uh, some woman uh, a nanny I believe that was employed by his household uh, and he disappeared and they were looking for Lord Lucan they thought that John Stonehouse was Lord Lucan because he wasn't it was John Stonehouse and that's how he ended up uh, back in Britain, got sentenced. I think he got sentenced to six years, and uh, he was banged up in the scrubs. I previously mentioned my encounters with John Stonehouse, who was uh, obviously one of the Brotherhood, and uh, he was being protected by them. Unfortunately for the Brotherhood, I wasn't a member of it, and as far as I was concerned, Stonehouse was a prisoner. Treated with all the respect that is due to any other prisoner, but no more. That's that's the way it's got to work, hasn't it? If it doesn't work that way, then it's corrupt. And that's something I wasn't. Yeah, Another famous uh, individual who was locked up in the scrubs was a guy called Basil Bunting. Yeah? Now, Basil Bunting is a famous poet and writer... Uh, and he was imprisoned in the scrubs. And uh, I'm now going to read you one of his poems, because no doubt you won't really have heard very much of Basil Bunting. But uh, this is one of Basil Bunting's best-known poems. It's called At Brigflat's Meeting House. It's not an easy poem to read this, so you'll have to bear with me when I do my very best. At Brigflat's Meeting House by Basil Bunting. Bust time, Mox, Coma, Rome, Wren set up his own monument. Others watch, falls, dwindle, think the sun's fires sink. Stones 
indeed, sift to sand, oak blends with saints' bones, yet for a little longer, here stone and oak shelter, silence while we ask nothing but silence, look how clouds dance under the wind's wing, and leaves delight in transience. There you go. Make of that what you will. At Brigflat's Meeting House by Basil Bunting. Um, there's no reason to lock him up in the scrubs, though, is it? Yeah, various other uh, infamous people been in there, of course. I mentioned my encounters in the prison with Ian Brady, the disgraceful, disgusting, horrible Moore's murderer who, when I first met him, was locked up on in the block, in the segregation unit. They had a little trick in the segregation unit. Believe this or believe it or not, but it is the truth. Some of the sadistic staff, and they were a bit sadistic, they used to have a black marker pen, and they'd write on the hard-boiled eggs in the morning for breakfast the crimes that the inmates had committed. Uh, so they had uh, Commander Drury, ex-Scotland Yard, uh, he was imprisoned in uh, on the wing, and uh, his egg they wrote on it bent copper. Yeah, um, Ian Brady it was child killer. So when they came down for the breakfast, they had to pick the hard boiled egg that matched their crime. I mean, it's strange, isn't it, the way that the staff behaved? But they, that's what they did, and uh, believe me. <laughs> They picked the egg that matched their crime, never anything else, because if they didn't, there was one guy there who was about six foot eight, he just used to pick them up with one hand and run up the stairs and generally slap them about a bit. It was no good saying anything to the staff there, because you'd get, you'd get one as well. They were completely out of hand. The guy who actually ran the segregation unit for a period of time, had uh, a second like uh, interest outside the prisons. He was uh, a scoutmaster, great big fella, Tarzan lookalike. You get a lot of them in the jails, you know. Tarzan lookalike, big bastards, yeah. And he got done for uh, molesting children. Seriously, ah, yeah, there's some strange people out there. Of course, as I said, uh, we're talking about the history of Wormwood Scrubs here. Uh, Leslie Grantham was in there, uh, as you know. Uh, he was uh, went on to play Dirty Den in EastEnders. Of course, he really was a Dirty Den in, he, uh, in the end, wasn't he? He got sacked from EastEnders. I think he was uh, going on to chat rooms uh, on the internet, talking to people and then standing up, showing them, showing them his willy. The man was obviously an interesting character, shall we say. Dirty Den, yeah, he was in there. Jimmy Tibbs was in there, the boxing trainer. He was a gentleman, Jimmy Tibbs. I think he'd just been suckered into it because uh, he was an East Ender and uh, I think they wanted somebody to drive and uh, he'd, he'd, I think he just got was driving the people while they went out and did a robbery or something. He got some time for that. The uh, great train robbers were there. Gordon Goody, Jim Hussey. Gordon Goody was a nice guy. Really good cook. Went on to run a, a restaurant and bar in Spain, I believe in Tenerife, I think it was. Yeah, I don't know, saw him after he left prison. But he was a, he was a nice enough guy when he, when he was in there. I told you also about, uh, you know, the scrubs. The, at the end of the scrub, you go up Artillery, uh, up Duquesne Road with the scrubs on the left. When you get to the end of the wall at the scrubs, there's a lane goes up there. It's called Artillery Road. Opposite Artillery Road, there's the nursing quarters of Hammersmith Hospital. The nurses in the quarters at the top, believe this or not, yeah, used to parade around, start bollock naked, and the inmates and D-wing, that's the lifer's wing at the scrubs, they used to get up on there 
on a stool on a chair at the back and and peer at these uh, nurses I was in there one night and uh, one of the inmates said to me come and have a look at this boss I said, oh, well, what is it I shot the bolt on the door so it didn't get slammed behind me uh, I went in and had a look and there's this n naked blonde lady she was a natural blonde by the way seriously uh, she was ironing something I don't know what she's ironing start bollock naked I mean uh, come on I mean it's strange isn't it yeah Wormwood Scrubs been there a long time the reason they called it Wormwood Scrubs because that was the name of the of the area and it was a scrubland and Wormwood was one of the scrub bushes that used to grow on there and from Wormwood they make a thing called absinthe yeah and that was used to treat parasitic worms believe it or not that's right that's why they called that prison HMP Wormwood Scrubs because it's built on the land that was known as Wormwood Scrubs and it was built by the prisoners and the, and the bricks were manufactured on, on, on site alright well it's that time I hope you enjoy that little history lesson that's a song dinger but it's not a song I'm going to read you one of my poems not Basil Bunting Wren built his own monument yeah I assume he was referring to St. Paul's Cathedral. Anyway, this is called Toy Boy Blues. This is by me, of course, from my book, Flowers and Collected Poems. Yeah, this is Toy Boy Blues. It, it, it came from when my daughter was, uh, she was about eight or nine, you know, and she used to play with these little Barbie dolls and uh, have little engagements with... Uh, Right. but anyway this is what I imagined was happening with the with the toy with with the, with the toys toy boy blues by John G Sutton Barbie and Cindy are dollies with dresses and ribbons to wear long flowing curls that are golden they make a spectacular pair young children they like to play with them Pretend that they go to the ball. Then they go to the races or golfing and always enjoying it all. Now Derek and Ken are the boy dolls with curly dark hair and tight pants. The children, aware of the difference, give Barbie and Cindy a chance. That night the disco was crowded. Derek and Ken danced the twist. Barbie and Cindy danced with them. At midnight, the two couples kissed. Next morning was cold for the dollies. Both Barbie and Cindy looked sick. They had made an awful discovery. Neither Derek nor Ken had a dick. Now people, this tale has a moral. A lesson for us and for them. It's the dollies that get all the toy boys, but it's women that get all the men. There you go. Toy Boy Blues by John G. Sutton. Don't forget, on the first Tuesday in October, we'll be doing a Q&A live for one hour, 7pm to 8pm. And uh, from 6.45 to 7pm, I will be... It'll be live, but I won't be here. I'll have my jukebox on, so you can listen to some of John's pop records on my 1969 jukebox. It's an NSM prestige jukebox. Exactly the same as the one that used to be in the pub when I used to take my wife in there immediately before we got married. In fact, some of the same records are on there. Suspicious Minds, Elvis Presley. That's on there. Right, so anyway, thank you very much. Hope you enjoy this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll be back. <laughs>